here uh, we've got a sort of just drawing a sort of general uh, curve here and I'm going to go uh, up to a point x here and I'm going to define a function which is uh, called so I'm going to call an area function okay so so this area in here I'm going to say is a of x it's the area up to x right uh, and then I'm going to go just a little bit further than x so I'm going to go uh, you know I'm going to go h further where h is a reasonably small number and we're going to go to uh, x plus h so if I did the area you know all the way up to also including all of this stuff so if I now add this in as well then the then the total area would be you know area function up to x plus h that's what this area means this means take all the area under the curve from zero up to the point we've got to uh, here it was x and then we've now gone up to uh, x plus h and the uh, crux of this proof is to look at this little uh, this little extra area in here we're going to look at it in uh, two different ways now firstly this area in here okay this red bit well it's the extra amount we get when we go up to x plus h instead of uh, going up to x so one way of writing this down is just to say that it's the area uh, up to x plus h minus the area up to x it's the difference between those two things and now I'm going to just compare this to uh, two uh, rectangles so if I just draw that section out again here so that's just a copy of the the red section uh, up there it's got width h and if I just cut it off at this point here the y value here is just the value of the function here so if this function uh, let's call it f of x let's say it was y as f of x then this y value would be f of x so the area of just this rectangle here you know ignoring this part here okay would be uh, h times f of x and so the area that I've got here is larger than uh, is larger than h times f of x okay. so so this area is uh, bigger than in fact let's say uh, greater than or equal to uh, f of x times h now another way of looking at it is to say okay don't cut it off there but actually why don't we cut it off here instead at the top and say what about what about this rectangle okay so I'm going up to this point now so this one is uh, goes up to goes up to f of x plus h right? so this height of this larger rectangle is f of x plus h so this is smaller than the area of this rectangle you see because the you know I've got now I've got a rectangle that's bigger than the bit that I'm looking at and the area of the rectangle is h times f of x plus h okay so you're following it this far that's the that's the hardest bit you know we've, we've enclosed this area in between these two rectangles right now almost there so what I'm going to do is take this inequality and divide it through everywhere by h now h is a positive number so I'm allowed to do that without messing up the inequality it's not going to change the signs so I'm going to divide by h and here I'm going to divide by h as well and then here I'm going to divide by h and we've got this. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, the limit as h tends to zero through this whole uh, expression, and uh, you'll have to uh, trust me. I suppose that that's something that we're allowed to do. There doesn't seem to be anything uh, obviously wrong with it, uh, but I'm just going to say, okay, you know, if the if this is true, then you know it's true for any value of h. So it's also true for very small values of h, and so it's going to be uh, true in the limit and uh, that turns out to be okay here. If these had been strict inequalities, I'd be a bit more worried, but we've got less than or equal to here. Um, I'm, ha I'm happy to take the limit. Just trying to give you an idea of how this works. Now, the limit of h tends to zero of the of the central part. So let's do that first. I'm just going to literally write that as as it is here. And this one. Now, the limit of x h tends to zero of f of x plus h. Well, if I make h very close to zero, 
then f of x plus h is just going to come down and be very close to f of x. This function is nice and smooth, so uh, you know, as I make h very small, it's just going to become f of x. The limit as h turns to 0 of f of x, well, there's no h in there, so that is just f of x, and we don't need to do any taking of the limits. And now, the really nice thing here is you look at this form, and as I said at the start, you need to know first principles differentiation, because this is exactly the form of the first principles derivative of the function a. Okay, it's a, you know, we had the form before we did it with f, it was f of x plus h minus f of x over h when we took the limit, we've got the same thing with a here. So this is the derivative of uh, a with respect to x at h. Okay, so um, either a prime of x, or we could write it as uh, dA by dx, if you like. And that is lying between f of x and f of x. Now, if something is both bigger than or equal to and smaller than or equal to a number, you know, if I'm greater than or equal to 3 and I'm smaller than or equal to 3, I must be equal to 3. So actually, the fact that this is both smaller and bigger than this means we can say it, the only way that can work is, is is if dA by dx is equal to uh, f of x. Right? And now integrating uh, you know this expression then you know finding the antiderivative we're saying okay well if we're saying if we differentiate the area we get the we get this function so you know the reverse process of differentiation is integration so it must be that if I uh, integrate uh, f of x dx then I get this area function, okay? And that uh, justifies the link between differentiation and integration, sorry, integration and areas. Now, just to go back to the previous example, we had you know, the integral between two and five. Then why do we do all that sort of you know substituting in and subtracting? Well, if when I integrate the function at a particular you know uh, you know I, I get this area up to function. What I actually want here is the area up to 5 minus the area up to 2, right? You know, so I want all that stuff up from 0 to 5, then I want to subtract this bit from 0 to 2. So that's where this thing comes in, where we do, you know, if I want this area here, and this is the function y equals uh, f of x, that I would integrate that function with respect to x between 2 and 5, and what I get then, well, the integral is this, er and the integral is this area function when I substitute in x. So I do, you know, the area up to, I get the area up to 5, you know, minus the area up to 2. So I want to substitute in 5 and subtract what I get when I substitute in 2. So, um, a little bit complicated, but I hope it was worth it. It's, a, you know, really nice to, you know, proof here to see, you know, why this really works. It's one of the first, you know, really, I think, elegant proofs, uh, you know, that you can you can look at. You know, you know, you might say there's a few cases I haven't considered, you know, and we, we do need to think separately about when this function goes below the axis. We'll look at that in another video. That's an important special case. Um, and you could probably pick some tiny little holes in, 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 in the, um, you know, this setup here. But basically, you know, this justifies that link.